Welcome to Concepts of Biology, Chapter 1. If you happen to hear either a cat or a um, trumpet in the background, it's not you. Uh, there may be a cat coming up in the background and there is a concert going on behind my in my backyard. I'm going to do this recording from the book. Uh, because your PowerPoint really just only contains the images that are already in the book. So don't try to study from the PowerPoint. It's not going to work. It, it is a good way for you to review the material, but not really to study the material. Um, in the book, I'm going to talk about chapter one with you. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Um, I just like looking at it online. So table of contents is right here. Um, you can see it right away and each chapter has the same structure, how it's built, right? There's always an introduction, then um, the sections of the chapter, and then there's key terms, the chapter summary, and each of these, each chapters have these same kinds of things. Um, I like to look at it just online. Um, if an app is the way to go, as far as you're concerned, uh, you can go that route. You can download a PDF. You can print a PDF. Uh, and for about 30 bucks, 20 bucks, you can order a printed copy if you don't, if you prefer having something in your hand. Um, I prefer just watching and looking at it online. Um, now again, table of contents it's right here so you can make this appear and disappear um, and then here you have the sections of the book and if you click on it it opens it up um, and then you get to introduction to biology so click on the introduction and it gets you to these two chapters that we're going to be talking about um, picture from the earth gives us a little bit of an idea. There's a huge variety of animals, plants, all kinds of things that are on there, you know, and they're visible from space, right? This green stuff, that's organisms, that's not dirt. Um, and when we go into the themes and concepts, each of the chapters always has uh, learning objectives. Um, so the learning objectives for this chapter is that you should, at the end of the chapter, be able to identify and describe the properties of life, describe the levels of organization among living things, and list examples of different subdisciplines of biology. It talks about biology, what biology is, and then it jumps right into the properties of life. <clears throat> it starts by telling you a list of the properties of life. Um, there's some discussion as to how many properties of life there really are, and a they're a little bit overlapping. Um, seven, eight, eight, nine, that's where we usually land. So this book says eight. Um, but that number as a number is not necessarily written in stone. Um, we agree on the characteristics, but some of the characteristics uh, may be a little bit overlapping. Um, one little note here the book you can log into the book and keep highlights and notes um, so if that's what you want to do um, you can do that uh, mine is a little different from yours so I, I purposefully didn't log in so that it looks that mine looks just like yours um, but these characteristics that I'm them listing now that or the book lists now is what all life has in common by definition so if something is by definition not alive like a virus it can still affect you but it's not alive um each organism has an order it's highly structured in some way shape or form um even simple even single cell organisms are structured um we're not just a bag of bones right you've heard that uh, the, the, the bones that we are made out of, they are attached to each other in a very structured kind of way. So there is an organization that goes into building an organism. Um, <clears throat> every organism responds to stimuli. Um, you may not think of a plant as responding to stimuli, but a plant, even if it's not a mimosa, 
response to stimuli. Um, you've all seen fields of sunflowers. They direct their faces to the sun. There is a reason for that. Um, trees lose their leaves in the winter. Why do they do that? Um, it is a response to stimulus. Um, organisms who are alive reproduce. Um, we know that, right? That's one of the key items about um, being alive is that reproduction is a thing and that your offspring sort of kind of looks like you with some variability. We're going to talk about very, we're going to talk about that in, in, in some detail. Um, adaptation. Adaptation means there's change. Um, organisms don't remain the same. Situations don't remain the same. The same. So um, <clears throat> adaptation is part of life. Change is part of life. Um, one kind of change is growth and development. Um, most organisms, many organisms, um, they 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 develop in some form. They they are born as children or an immature version of the organism, and then as a, they're a grown up mature version of the organism. Some organisms aren't like that. Bacteria are a single or single cell organism. Um, they make new bacteria who are immediately um, able to, you know, divide and reproduce. Um, regulation and homeostasis. Every organism regulates their internal environment in some way, shape or form. Otherwise, they wouldn't be an organism. Um, there has to be some kind of a balance, some kind of a homeostasis, some kind of a steady state. <clears throat> uh, not an equilibrium. Uh, nothing is ever in equilibrium ever, uh, or, or static. Nothing is ever static. There's always movement um, or else <clears throat> if there's no movement, there's no life. Um, energy processing, life requires energy. Um, if there's no energy, there's no life. Um, some energy, some organisms grab the energy from the sun. Um, other organisms grab the energy from other organisms. And we'll talk about the, in detail, how this happens and how this works. Um, and then we get to evolution, which is another, it's basically the changes that happen in adaptation, um, that are almost made irreversible. Um, but so that's that's the that's one of the big concepts right so the properties of life those are some important concepts and we're going to talk about each individual one of them um in some level of detail uh, through the next couple of weeks um so i already talked about one level of organization that you know we're not a bag of bones but there's also other levels of organization that is a hierarchical from like from the small to the big level of organization. So um, that level of organization um, is illustrated here with this image where you have an organization that starts with in the smallest with the atom. Uh, atoms make up molecules, molecules make up organelles, organelles make up cells, cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs, organs make up organisms, populations and communities. Those make up an ecosystem and that all makes up the biosphere. So this is from the smallest to the largest. And at every single one of these levels, biology has a function. Because um, here, you know, organelles interact with each other, molecules do work. Um, Tissues make up the organs that keep us alive to make sure that, you know, um, and um, populations interact with each other. There's behavioral things. We hunt each other. There's prey um, that, you know, one, one, somebody's the predator, somebody's the prey. There's lots of different interactions going on. And not all, so there's this hierarchy that goes kind of from the small to the big, but there's, that's kind of a, um, kind of a vertical hierarchy, but there's also kind of a horizontal hierarchy that gives you a diversity within the organisms. So there's lots and lots of different organisms. Um, and for example, here, this, this tries to show 
this, and I personally, I'm not a big fan of this particular graph, but the way you read this, the, the way you read this particular diagram is in the, in the domain eukarya, all of these different organisms are part of the domain eukarya, um, meaning they're all eukaryotes. Um, but then a paramecium and a tree are not an animalia. Uh, um, a tree is planty. Um, and um, a paramecium is a, um, pro uh, a um, protist. And so the um, in the kingdom Animalia, uh, we have all of these organisms. And then in the phylum Chordata, an earthworm and a moth are not part of, part of the phylum Chordata. Um, and so you can make this you can make this path as you get more and more specialized into you know down to all the way down to the species where you then have Canis lupus, uh, which is either a dog or a wolf, <clears throat> which can then be divided up into subspecies. Um, but then the coyote gets added when you get to the genus, the fox get added when you get to the family, the order. Um, so this is how you read this thing. <clears throat> Um, now, one of the um, domains that when we look at different domains, so the biggest, um, the biggest um, divisions is the division of the domains. Um, and at the, at the level of domains, we are looking at bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Um, in, um, and we are down here. So we're just this tiny, tiny little group. The things that we think of when we think about living creatures is mostly right just this in that little corner. Uh, when the reality is there's a huge, huge variety of organisms all over this world um, that um, many of which we don't have any idea that they even exist. Um, now the other level of variety is in level variety, the, the branches and the variety of biological studies. Um, there's all different kinds of fields that are part of the field of biology. Um, so you've got molecular biologists, that's my background. Um, you've got people who are looking at microorganisms, who are looking at bacteria. You have people who are looking at ecology. Um, that the environment, you have people who look at um, neurobiology, which is the nervous system. Um, medicine um, is part of biology. Um, paleontology is studying fossils. So there's, if, if you are a little bit interested in anything that has to do with living things or things that used to be living, um, or with the environment, biology is not a bad place. Um, to hang your hat. Um, forensic science is another one of those that you know you don't necessarily think about when you're thinking about biology. But as um, DNA evidence becomes more and more prevalent, um, those kinds of jobs are becoming um, are becoming much more front and center. Um, the other thing, one of the things I really like about this book is it doesn't shy away from some of the difficult subjects. Um, one of the dis difficult job subjects is when you're talking about scientific study, you got to talk about scientific ethics, ethics, and you got to talk about this from the very start. There are lots of things that have been ha that have happened in the past in the name of science that were just simply not okay. Um, so therefore, for example, there was a, um, the Tuskegee, the 1932 Tuskegee study. Um, there were um, 399 African-American men who were, uh, who were diagnosed with syphilis, um, but were never told they had syphilis because the doctors wanted to study the progression of the syphilis. So they didn't get, they, they, they withheld medication. They didn't treat these people um, because they wanted to study the progression. Um, and that is just not acceptable. You cannot um, use a human as a research subject against their will. Um, because those things happen, we now are a lot more careful when it comes to human studies and when it comes to animal studies. Um, we make sure um, that as much as we can possibly control it, um, that ethics are very important um, 
when we do research, um, that the um, the sanctity of human life and human decisions, um, and and the the you know uh, that a human has control over their own body, and they can make a decision whether they want to be part of a study or not. Um, that is part of it's it's a very important part of doing science. Um, and with that, I'm going to send you in. Um, to the chapters, um, yeah, into the activities um, related to this chapter. <laughs>